G'day to all my friends and family and welcome to my YouTube channel and this episode of Jim's 5am Club. I'm just on my way to Mudgee. I'm just in Capity at the moment. I remember maybe about 20 or 30 years ago I used to come to Capity all the time with my uncles and we used to go on hunting trips but uh, I'm just driving at the moment and uh, look at this beautiful old pub the Capity Royal Hotel things just don't change they're just still very very beautiful so um, I was sitting at home this morning looking out the window and I saw a beautiful blue sky in autumn day and I said to myself I just don't want to waste this day I just want to try and make make the most of it and uh, said to myself what can I do what can I do and I thought to myself I haven't been to Mudgee for many many years and it would be a good opportunity to uh, just hop in the car Paul is away overseas at the moment, so I thought I'd uh, just do it and um, come for a drive and just check things out. So uh, here we are, we're on the road, uh, there's hardly any vehicles, light traffic, so that's something that I'm looking forward to uh, experiencing. So what I thought I'd do today is... Um, go on a drive and have a bit of a drive and chat and talk about a book summary that I've just recently read and uh, it was quite impressive. So the book that I want to talk to you about today is entitled How to Think Like an Emperor and it's based on the writings of an, a, a Roman emperor and I think he reigned in the, uh, the first century AD, so just after Jesus, um, Jesus' birth and Jesus' life, uh, there was an emperor who ruled uh, the Roman Empire. And he was an emperor who expressed and lived uh, the Stoic philosophy of life. And for those who are not aware, uh, there are quite a few different philosophies and schools of philosophies. Uh, the ancient Greeks um, had a number of wonderful ancient philosophers, but they didn't all practice or talk about the same things. Uh, bearing in mind that philosophy is a way of life it's a way of uh, seeing life, it's your world view. And we've had philosophers such as uh, Aristotle, Plato and Socrates and many, many other, many, many other uh, philosophers and schools of philosophy of which one are the Stoics. So. Um, Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Emperor, was expressing in his writings the Stoic school of philosophy. So this book is written by an author known as Donald Robinson and what he basically has done is um, he's picked out from the writings of Marcus Aurelius and try to identify the key themes, the key philosophical themes that were being expressed. And that is what we're going to go through today. So we're just going to take three key points. We're not going to uh, try and understand every single aspect of the Stoic philosophy. We're not going to go through and uh, do the whole book. We're just going to summarise elements and aspects of that book and see where it leads us. Here's a truck with all hay on it. How beautiful is that? All the hay 
bales on that truck being uh, taken and no doubt will be stored away for the winter months for the uh, livestock to enjoy uh, even though we've had lots and lots of rain as you can see there's grass everywhere we've had a wonderful couple of years in terms of uh, the inclement weather too good in some cases that it's caused floods suffering and pain but uh, that's how Australia is that's how Australia has always been and that's how Australia will always be it's an arid land um, characterized by flood 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 and then the occasional um, drought 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 flood drought 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 so there are more droughts than floods but when it rains it pours and when it dries up it dries up so there's no no in between so when we look around this wonderful country that I'm in you can see um, especially here on the eastern side of Australia that uh, it is wonderfully green and beautiful and probably a great time to be a farmer course not getting flooded and uh, having those sorts of issues but to be able to uh, maximize the yield on your uh, work and from the land so let's get a little bit more into this book today and based on the philosophy of Jim's 5am club what I try and do is uh, showcase and highlight the beauty in the area or land that I find myself and um, taking that into consideration uh, what I try and do is to highlight it and showcase it and to overlay it with uh, a message of empowerment where we can gain something more from it so that we can have um, a dual experience a visual one but also a learning experience where People on YouTube or on social media are able to vicariously come on this drive with me today, come on this journey with me and enjoy the fruits of, uh, of this message and of this, uh, this short journey. So uh, the author in this book kicks off with a, um, an observation from Marcus Aurelius where he says that our, um, our value judgments are what makes something good or evil. So each and every one of us have the ability to judge things. And of course, depending on the life that we've lived, depending on our educational level, on our cultural background, a whole host of things that have come our way in our life knowing very well that each and every one of us will experience a different past a unique and different past where we will have and gather slithers of reality we will all have a different present I am here you are there and we're going to experience a different now, you know, a, a different life from this in a different present. It's so profound to understand that and of course it's going to lead us to a different future. So no two people are ever going to experience the same reality. Um, your re reality is different to mine. Mine is different to yours. There was a little turtle there road that had been run over and a uh, crow was just eating at it so um, it's, un it's important to understand that we've all got a different past different present and a different future we've all experienced different slivers of reality nobody gets a full view of reality regardless of how how wise you are regardless of how well traveled you are you may get more slivers than other people but you're definitely not going to get the full 
package of reality and life and everybody's reality is different it's, this is a really profound and powerful point that comes from this book that all of those slithers that, of reality we can, that we get in our life experiences um, shape our worldview, shape our philosophy shape our judgments and enable us to be able to determine the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, uh, so much so that today in the world, you know, you've got people who are trying to um, educate us into seeing things that are black and seeing them as white and vice versa, seeing things that we know are wrong and trying to convince us that they're right. So uh, there are huge changes at place that are confusing lots and lots of people. So it's important to understand, as we said before, that we have different uh, slithers of uh, reality and some of those things we may have inherited from our parents, we may have absorbed from our culture, from our religion, from our families, from our parents, uncles, aunts, work peers, environments, media. There are so many things at play and they're all colouring our view of the world. And these things according to Marcus Aurelius from 2000 years ago, where he says that our value judgments are what makes something right or wrong. And you see, you see people, we know people who are able to rationalise things and basically rationalise the wrong things and make them right and right things to rationalise them and see them as wrong. So I guess it's up to each and every one of us to take responsibility and accountability for our lives and to, um, and to journal and to try and hold dear to us the things that we truly value and to make sure that what we do, what we say, how we live our lives are aligned to those values. Else, if you have an open mind or if you have an open value set, before you know it, there will be people, influential people, will be coming into your life and taking your open mind and open value set and turning it into a rubbish dump um, where they will fill it up with all the garbage that they have in their life, in their minds and their soul. So it's important I guess to a certain extent to be narrow minded when it comes to values because being too open-minded will uh, potentially, I'm not saying it will, but potentially lead you down the wrong track, onto the wrong road, into the wrong circles, and you may get to the point in your life where you look yourself in the mirror and you don't like, you don't recognize any longer the person that you see, your family don't recognize who you've become because the link in that long chain that long family and cultural chain has weakened and has broken and has changed the direction and the strength and the, um, the ability of that chain to pass on the links that it had inherited in the first place so um, the author goes on to talk about a number of things, but today we're just going to pick out three, three key points from Marcus Aurelius's writings to focus on those. And the first key formal point to come out of this book is where Marcus Aurelius says that we must try and live virtuously to living our virtues and living virtuously implies being in harmony with nature, with our environment and with our life. Being in harmony 
harmony, being in sync, cooperating, collaborating and embracing what comes our way rather than fighting and blaming life to be one with it to be to be engaged with it and to live breathe and express it um, to its fullest um, this is a powerful and a profound point which comes from this authorship um, and it is very very closely aligned to the Christian beliefs the Christian life that um, that we live um, and it's all about living the virtues identifying the virtues and making sure that we live our values and that, that our actions are aligned and um, full expression of those values rather than a dabbler in those expressions and those values. So the Stoic philosophers, uh, simply put, believed that a life should be simple yet meaningful. We should try and live a simple yet meaningful life. Um, and the key to life is to be content with it. So being content, being simple, being meaningful, living virtues, all of those things are really, really closely aligned to many religious beliefs, many religions. Um, I can't talk about Buddhism, I can't talk about Islam, I can't talk about other but, um, religious faiths. But what I do know is that from a Christian perspective, this is very, very close uh, to what the Christian life is all about. So the author goes on to talk about the importance of not questioning, not overly questioning life and pushing back and fighting life, but working with it, working in collaboration with it. So, um, I want to go to Safala, and I'm just wondering whether or not, what I might do is I might hang a left here and go to Safala first, before I go to, um, to Mudgee, because, <clears throat> how long has it been? It's, must, it, it's been, um, it's been at least 40, it's been at least 50 years, 45 years since I've been to Safala and I remember when I first went to Safala how amazed I was and how beautiful it was. So it's about 30 kilometers away so we'll go this way and see where it leads us. But let's continue here on this book summary. I'm happy I'm on this road because I really wanted to go to Safala. So um, the Stoic philosophers talk about the importance of not questioning life or if you want to question question life, to question it with an open heart and uh, and in the with the right attitude, I think is the, the important point that I want to make. I know that there are a lot of people who question Christianity all the time, but it hurts me when I hear the way they question it. I had an, I have an uncle of mine who, for some reason or other has spent his whole life questioning Christianity but from the wrong perspective trying to find out what's wrong with Christianity in order to prove his mother who was a a, a beautiful uh, Christian a, a deep believer Christian believer and for some reason he got his nose out of joint and he spent his whole life trying to prove her wrong and trying to blame the church and blame this and blame that and uh, to try and wrong his parents whereas he's a smart man I'm not saying he wasn't a smart man or he's not he is not a smart man but his intelligence was used with the wrong attitude his questioning was 
with a heart of, of, of ice, with a, a bitterness which is only going to um, uh, open him up to, um, to biases, to confirmation biases, where all he's going to see is what's wrong because that's all he's looking for. Whereas if he studied Christianity and the church with a uh, pure heart and with the right attitude, then he would have been in a far better position to use his intelligence and curiosity to be able to complement and supplement what his mother was saying and help her live a more Christian life and a better life and help him and his children and his grandchildren um, live the Christian way as well. So it's all about living life in agreement, uh, in agreement with nature, in agreement with the truth, in agreement with the world, in agreement with the order of things and accepting it and making peace and not fighting and trying to uh, rip, rip it apart and, and damage it. So, um, I love this road. I'm just looking at all the little roads that come off this road. It just, it just looks so interesting. So, the whole objective of living a, a life from a Stoic philosopher's perspective, from being a Stoic, is to try and discover and express your best, your best self um, and to express gratitude and to contemplate beauty and nature and to acknowledge and to accept everything that comes your way I guess because everything happens to us and for us you know for a reason you know, nothing happens um, that can't be accepted as happening for a beautiful a productive and an empowering reason so the next formal point which comes out of this book that this author talks about or he talks about Marcus Aurelius's uh, philosophical teachings from 2,000 years ago he says that we need to practice we need to practice and to hone um, our, our virtues and to work at it and it may take a whole lifetime uh, the reason why God gives us a lifetime and that lifetime could be uh, three score and ten could be 70 years it could be 30 years it could be 30 seconds and uh, some some people get to experience life just for a month or so and uh, that is all they get but they at least get to experience their mother's heartbeat and their mother gets to experience their heartbeat so who knows what your lifetime is in terms of uh, time but as we say you've got that lifetime to do something to change somebody to improve something and to and to do do something productive and positive so the author here says that uh, the Stoics were able to identify uh, four key virtues. I know that in the Christian teacher, teaching, in the, in the, in the Beatitudes, um, there are more virtues and there are a number of virtues and sometimes virtues can turn into vices if they're overly uh, explored and expressed. So we need to have a balance. But the four virtues that Marcus Aurelius informs us about are wisdom, morality, courage, and moderation. So uh, we need to understand, and this is a, a point that comes through time and time in our Christian life, that no one is perfect. Um, other than, of course, Jesus, who was the, who was and is the God-Man, both 100% man and 100% God. But apart.
apart from Jesus, no other person that you'll ever come in, come into contact with, regardless of how, how holy how holy they appear. No other person is perfect, and we need to practice our virtues over our entire life in order to try and to master them as best they can, as best we can. And as we said, mastery takes a lifetime, or could take a lifetime. Some people get, get it in a heartbeat, but we need to continue to work at our virtues and to practice with purpose and to uh, protect those virtues because we are constantly in a battle, we're constantly at war, um, and those, those virtues shouldn't and can't be taken for, uh, for granted. So we need to work, we need to work hard, and to understand that each and every one of us are a work in progress um, that, uh, that are, are being shaped, coloured, improved um, in a path of snakes and ladders um, there are days where we do things that improve us and there are other days that we do things which uh, take us back back a couple of steps but we need to keep on fighting to keep on need keep on pushing along that path to progress and whilst we may never get to perfection um, it's all about making progress and understanding that we're work in progress and that we're unworthy and that's why the church, the Christian church, has things which are called sacraments and those sacraments are gifts and that all that we have from God are gifts because we are unworthy uh, the things that are bestowed upon us and offered to us uh, with God's mercy for us to to use and to try and make the most of. So what else can we say now? So we need to work at it, we need to, to try and perfect it and we need to find a balance, a, a balance between the cardinals. That's a beautiful way of putting it. Um, because each of our values, as we said, uh, require a balance. You can't, do, you can't just live one particular value, but you need to have a spectrum of values, which are cardinals, and we need to align them, we need to cooperate with them, we need to collaborate with them, use them, leverage them, and care for them in order for them to fully express their beauty in our lives and in our relationships with other people. So we need to find a, a balance um, so that we are able to um, find happiness in our lives and to live an equilibrated life. Equilibrated life, which is a balanced life. So we need to practice the author goes on to say that satisfaction and fulfillment in a person's life comes from living the virtues, comes from living a virtuous life, which is, uh, once again, deeply aligned to what we learn in our Christian faith. So, uh, that satisfaction and fulfillment comes from at least trying to work and trying to express those virtues as best we can in a balanced way. So we need to be able to control our emotions and dw don't dwell on the things that we can't control. How many times do we hear this in uh, modern psychology? Most of the book summaries that I talk about that we go through um, express this very thing. thing that has been talked about for thousands of years in ancient philosophy from the ancient Greek philosophers and no doubt uh, the ancient uh, philosophers of old from China, from uh, 
Egypt, from Iran, Persia. You know, human nature doesn't really change all that much. And uh, it's important to be able to use the energy and focus that you have on working on things that you can control. Otherwise, it's folly. You know, trying to change the environment, try, trying to change the climate um, by thinking that human impact um, is, is folly to a certain extent. Um, because there are so many things at play. The, the world, science, there are so many views, there are so many divergent views, and there are so many things that we don't know, that um, trying to, uh, I guess, change things that are um, beyond our capability um, is, a, is in one way, potentially, just a waste of our energy and uh, a, a, an expression of folly thinking that we can do things that uh, are outside of our power rather than you know, calling on God's help and action to place his hand to bring peace and harmony to what is happening in the world. Um, the author goes on to talk about the importance of accepting things like death and that death is inevitable but we just need to do the best we can with the years that we have available to us and to um, make the most of the days that we have and to change how we respond to things um, and to respond with th to things with love, with open heart and to do whatever we can uh, without uh, blaming others for what's happening in our lives because each and every person has their own fate. I remember as a kid I would go to the entrance and there would be hundreds and hundreds of people that would be fishing along the river there at the entrance. They'd all have similar sort of rods, similar sort of fishing lines, similar hooks, similar baits and they're all fishing and some people would be catching fish and other people wouldn't be catching fish and yet they all had their fishing lines in the same water, in the same river. Some people had their fishing lines in virtually the same place <coughs> as others and yet they wouldn't be catching fish. And it just goes to show that if it doesn't work for me, if it doesn't work for your father, if it doesn't work for your grandfather, for your boss, for your sibling, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to work for you. Each person has to live their life and to have a crack at life because you don't know what life randomly wants for you. You don't know what God wants for you, what God's plan is for you, but without trying, without giving it a go, without expressing and living your calling to the best of your ability, to the best of your skills, you may not get to experience the full gift and the full spectrum of what God's plan is through your laziness or your lack of action. So uh, we need to practice, we need to identify our calling and callings and to hone, to mould, to shape, to chip away at our virtues in order to be the best we can be and to live the life that we are meant to live and to reach the destiny 
that God had in mind for each and every one of us. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. We're over half an hour now, but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this uh, this drive, this 30 kilometer little uh, side track that I'm going to take in order to get to Safala. I just hope that Safala hasn't changed as much as I have changed over the years so that I, I can experience um, a little bit of the past, a little bit of the magic of the past where um, I think I came to Safala with uh, a friend of mine, Nick, and uh, his uncle, Con Bozzanellos, Con Bozzanellos, where we went hunting one day. But um, there you go. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode of Jim's 5am Club, uh, where we've had an opportunity to uh, vicariously go on a drive and talk and cover off another brilliant book summary, a book summary that looked into a classic, an ancient classic from 2,000 years ago from the writings of Marcus Aurelius, where we actually got into the head and the mind of a Roman emperor uh, back in the days when uh, the world was about to dramatically change advent of uh, the teachings of Jesus where God came to dwell among us and to uh, to be one with us and to uh, offer up um, his um, his uh, only begotten son for the salvation of humankind so that we are free forever and a day so that we don't ever get to experience death and uh, from the day of resurrection we are so far as to the left so I just need to turn around the day of resurrection so uh, we could be comfortably one with God if we chose to if we choose to so Yasas wishing you all the best chat again on this YouTube channel Jim Jim's 5am club and I'm just trying to find a play, place to turn around and here we go we can turn around here and I'll go back and try and find the magical place of Safala which was an old gold mining town Years ago. Yes, us and bye for now.